okay. So um, when Alan asked me, um, or Juno asked me whether I was happy to talk, um, I, I always am. And in a way, I'm going to tell you my story or journey, which hasn't finished yet. I sometimes think you know, the best part of my life is yet to come. But um, I lived here in Nepal, so um, I, I know my Nepali is uh, very Ramaru Chinese. <laughs> so that's very bad, but... But um, so I know Nepal, I love Nepal, and, and I had to leave here unexpectedly, actually, because my wife became very sick with heart disease, so we had to leave. And uh, sometimes I start my story by saying I went back to New Zealand, and after a little while, I'm an accountant, I know I can do the numbers, I started um, a business. With, and because I worked here with uh, the work with voluntary, I, I had no money. Um, so maybe I was like, you are today. <laughs> and, and, you, so, and sometimes uh, I want you to understand this and be encouraged by it, is that um, the amount of money I started my business with was only 14,000 rupees. Okay, so I imagine if I asked you here, who here has 14,000 rupees or can get 14,000 rupees? Put your hand up, I bet you can. There's a, I expect you can't get 14,000 rupees, you can go and ask your friends, your, your parents, your relations, your everyone. This is not 20,000 rupees as a price. <laughs> 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 so I actually think, you know, maybe some of you are too shy to put your hand up, but I think that all of you probably could get, you either have it, or you could get 14,000 rupees. Now, and part of my journey, that's all I had. I had no other money. I started a business with that a software business, so I like software and technology. I cannot write any software, I'm not clever enough, I've got some other people to do this. And um, in the end, I sold that business for $25 million. Okay? So I don't know how many rupees that is, do you? <laughs> it's a lot of rupees. You know, so it's a lot of rupees. And, uh, and so what I like to share is how that happened. Okay? Also, I'm going to tell you that I did it again. I thought the first time maybe I was just lucky, and, uh, and luck is an element, but I thought I'm going to try one more time, and I did it again. I even did it better the second time. And I hope to do it again and again, actually. So, but but um, um, I partly like to come and talk to you, as I do to other people in different parts of the world, to say you can do it as well. Um, one, you don't need lots of drive and uh, you know a whole lot of things and I'm going to talk to talk, talk you exactly about those things uh, today so I hope that is interesting for you I'll take you through a PowerPoint presentation if any of you at the at the end want a copy of this I'll give it to Alan or Junu and she then and, and if you give the email then you can have a copy of that as well I have some quite good pictures in it so no, you, know, <laughs> you never know who knows where New Zealand is Whereabouts? Okay, who's going to say whereabouts in the world? If I look at the world, whereabouts is it in the world? Down under. Hey? Down, under. down under. Who said down under? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right at the bottom of the world. Actually, some people, you know, so I was saying to Alan, sometimes when you go to America, not many people, they'll say, oh, it's in Europe somewhere. Uh, they, the Americans, uh, they think just uh, America is the only country. <laughs> and uh, is anyone from America here? Yeah. <laughs> it's the only country in North New Zealand they don't know. So we're, we're right down the bottom of the world. And I come from a place called Christchurch. Which button do I press here? On this one. I see what it doesn't work, the technology. <laughs> oh, I hit the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> This is Nepal, this is not New Zealand. <laughs> but I come from, um, in, in New Zealand it's made up of two, two, uh, country, uh, two islands. And I come from the South Island, the one at the bottom. And sometimes I like to show this picture because it's the same shape and the same size as Nepal. Okay, It's very, very similar. And in Nepal, the, the Himalayas are across here. And in, in New Zealand, we have the Southern Alps, we have mountains all across there. So I grew up as a child and we, we walk the mountains and we like this kind of thing. The other thing, so I want to tell you is that in Christchurch, this is where I live, here, uh, five years ago uh, we had a big earthquake. 
I don't know whether you ever heard or read of this, but it was a big earthquake in the city, and then a few months after that, we had another big one. It was even worse, and so that, um, that uh, some buildings fell down in our city, uh, people were killed, uh, not as many as here, but a couple hundred people were killed. Um, 15,000 15, homes were destroyed. Um, for the company, I, for my business, six of my staff, their homes were gone. And in this, in the, so um, I know about earthquakes. So I, I really feel for you. I understand even now sometimes when a truck goes past the building and it shakes, I, you know, <laughs> look around, oh, you know, uh, I'm out. I don't, I don't want to stay in the building. And, uh, and that's, I understand. Anyway, during this time, um, and I also want to say uh, with New Zealand, we are isolated way down the bottom of the world. Here's the thing. During this time, I was making this software. You know, don't worry about it, you can see that. I just made some, some, uh, some cloud software I was making. My team was making this. Um, in this isolated country down the bottom of the world, we had earthquakes and trouble. You know, when we had the earthquakes um, in our building, we had to leave. The building was unsafe. So I ended up with people working in, in my business in 11 countries in the world. In China, in Canada, in India, in Australia, just everywhere. Now some people uh, uh, just left, I don't want to live here <laughs> anymore in, in our city and they left and went all around the world but we still were able to work because you can do that today. It is possible. Okay, during this time then, we made this software. This software um, helps um, accounting firms, uh, because I understand and know accounting firms, it helps them run their business, okay? This software then I um, sold, um, I was, or we sold into countries like um, Saudi Arabia, into uh, Europe, and uh, UK, into Hong Kong, into Singapore, um, into Malaysia, into America, uh, into Canada, okay? And where am I living? In Christchurch. This is where I live. And so why I say that to you is I want you to understand this is the world we live in. You can do this in Kathmandu. So I think that's really exciting. When I lived here in uh, 1985, uh, when we came to Nepal in Pokhara, actually back then uh, you couldn't even make a phone call. Uh, when, my, when my wife got sick, it took um, a whole day to make a phone call to get, just to try and reach someone out of the country. You had to go to the exchange and ask permission and, oh, I don't know, it took, it took a whole day. So you think, actually, I look back then and think today, you, I imagine you all have, uh, you know, a phone and a, a smartphone and you can connect to the world. So again, a bit of a long in introduction, but I'm trying to say this to you because if you wanted to, and if you had 14,000 rupees, and if you had a whole lot of other things I'm going to tell you that, you that I think you need, you too could create a great business. Isn't that amazing? Do I, have I convinced you? Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> but that's what I want. I want to convince you, and now I'm going to tell you. There are some things I think you have to do. Actually, at the end of, after I sold this business, I then, um, I, I, you know, I stopped working for a little bit, Actually, I thought I would retire, and uh, I thought, oh, this would be good, and uh, this it did not work for me. Um, I, I played some golf, you know, so I like, like, and my score got worse, and then with, uh, I was at home instead of being away at the office, and then I could see, I said to my wife Cheryl, I could see how she could run the house a bit better, so I gave her some advice on how to do this. <laughs> this did not work. <laughs> so she showed me the door and said, you know, you can go and get a job again. <laughs> We'll go and do something else. So, so anyway, I uh, lost my track. Uh, let me go to no, my next slide. So, you could do this too. This is my lessons learned. This is what I want to take you through. Saying, what did I learn? Oh, this is what I was going to say. When I saw that business, I then um, sat down and tried to work out what did I do well? What were some things I did that were good that helped this business become successful? And I also wrote down a list of what were the things I did that were bad, what were the mistakes I made, and uh, so um, and tried to write this list. Because actually, then I decided if I'm going to do this again, I should know all the things that I did wrong, and I then should decide I don't <coughs> do this again, and I should look at some of the things I did right, 
and say this is what I should repeat. So this is actually the basis of what I'm going to show you today. By the way, here's one of the tricks. The list I wrote of all the right things I did and the good things I did, and the list I wrote of all the dumb things I did, the stupid things I did, the, the mistakes I made, which do you think was the biggest list? Mistakes. Mistakes. It was the mistakes. Okay. Do you know one of the problems I see with people who, who want to be successful and, and are not? They can't write the list of the mistakes. And so often I will say to, uh, for me, I'll say you look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and say, Mike, there was a bad decision. <laughs> be okay about it, okay? You must be able to do this. Some people have so much pride and, uh, and they can't do that. But one of the tricks to being successful is to actually know what you're not good at or the mistakes you made. But uh, not many people, you know, a lot of people will not do this. Um, so that's a trick. Okay. So my lessons learned. I have no regrets. Um, I have gone from, I said I, I created another business. So the total of those two businesses I was able to sell for over a hundred million dollars. And I started from nothing. So you can do this as well. I don't have a hundred million dollars. I have more money than I need. I had lots of people in, in my team who were shareholders as well and uh, they, they did really well out of it. And I enjoyed that. I like sharing that with the people who helped make it. It's so, a good so thing. So that is 14,000 rupees currency? 14,000 rupees, yeah. Nepali rupees. Yeah. Okay. Do you have? <laughs> you could get it though. You, you could get 14,000 though, isn't it? This is not so much. I think you, you can do that here. Okay, my lesson's left. So first thing I'll say is just you know have a clear uh, vision, okay? So this is my, this projector is not so this projector is not so clear. <laughs> this is clear and this is blurry. It all looks a bit blurry. Uh, one of the things I think you know if you it's okay to dream and to think I want to create I want to be wealthy. Uh, lots of people in the world say I would like to have money, especially if you don't have money. I used to be like this. I go, I don't have any money and, and uh, my life is a bit uh, stressful, you know, I have some bills to pay and oh, I'm trying to pay the bills and I, you know, for me I was married and I had children and uh, um, at, at the time I went into the business, uh, my wife was not working, she was at home, I had two children, uh, two daughters under five years old and uh, could I pay the bills, um, it, was, it was tough, so in one sense you go, um, I would like to have money. But if you just say that, that's not enough, is it? <laughs> you then you say, okay, how am I going to do this? Then one of the things I'll say is to have a very clear vision of the business, of the idea, of the product, of the market. Have very clear what, 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 what this business is. Actually, you must write it down. And also one of the things I've been discussing uh, with Alan here, even with the computer labs that we're doing in Nepal, I always, with the vision sense, just going, I want to end up over here. Uh, for us, actually, here in Nepal, I'm working with uh, MIC and Alan, and I'm saying, I want to end up over here to do 1,000, because I like rounding up computer labs in Nepal. This is a big number, isn't it? This is a lot of work. And so my vision, and same for Alan, is out over here. And then, so it's very clear, and then you have to work backwards to say, how will I do this, and how will I work it out? Some people's vision is not clear. Their vision is, is to just say, I want to make lots of money, I want to um, uh, be a millionaire, you know, in terms of dollar terms. Go, that is not a vision, so you have to have clear vision. I do say that I like to be, I don't know whether you have the expression here, uh, we'll call it a tall poppy. And part of the thing you have to do, do you have this expression here, Alan? Oh, okay. Oh, I must think of something else. Um, if you want to be successful, you will dream, you know, big ideas and have big plans. Okay? And so what will happen is uh, many people around you are not like this. So you are the exception. Okay? And, and sometimes it would be quite hard because people will, even your family will say, stop being like that. <laughs> You know, um, don't have that big dream and don't have that big idea because you'll fail, okay? And it's one of the things, you know, how I was saying, look in the mirror, 
and understand what you're good at and not good at, but people are scared, and you may be too as well, of failing. My big idea, my big dream. Um, there's things you can do to be successful, this is what I'm going to um, show you, but you should always have the dream and the vision to do something. I actually encourage it, this is for your life. Sometimes I'm going to get to, and I'll, I'm, I'm getting in front of myself, but I'm going to say, for the business, you must have a plan for how you get there. And this is everything I talk about um, to you this afternoon is true for your life as much as it is for a business. So when I say you should have a clear vision and a dream for the business, I would equally say you should have a clear vision and dream for your life. Okay? So I don't know whether you do, but actually most people don't. Okay? And here's the trick. You know, I'll just ask you, I won't ask you to put your hand up. But um, I know in business, if you don't write down the plan, you actually have to write it down. You actually have to do the budgets. If you don't do this, then you have a big chance of not being successful. <coughs> is that water? Um, is, yes. it, is that water? Is okay for me? Yeah. I will not get sick. You know. <laughs> is to know your why. Okay. What, you know, the, the reality is it comes down to it saying, you know, uh, why would your business exist? Because again, some people say, I have a big dream and a big plan to make a successful business. And I'll go, why? <laughs> what's the, you know, what's the why for the business? The, um, so you, this, is a, this is a trick. You must be able to work that out and explain it. Um, it's not good enough just to say, I want to make money. Well, I want to be successful. You have to be able to say why you want to, and what what makes the business different. You know, what's the why for the business? Airbnb. You all know Airbnb. So let me read out. You know, in some sense we could say, what does Airbnb do? And it helps you book a room, book a book a place. And you go, so, uh, somebody made a website, and you could book someone else's place, and you can go and stay there. This is the business. <clears throat> is that the business? It's not the business. The people who made that business, let me read out what they said. The mission statement, the why they exist for Airbnb is aims to con Airbnb aims to connect millions of people in real life all over the world through a community marketplace so that you can be so that you can belong anywhere. That's why. If you go and if you go and work in that business, it's not about just trying to make a website to make a booking. It's about saying the whole world, all of us people who live in the world, could be connected and go to different places and feel that we belong. That is different, isn't it? Actually, for me and my business, hello, come in. Come in. For me and my business, I did software for accountants. Actually, and I used to come at this part of the world, I had a big team of people, or a relative team of 70 people in Chandigarh in India. So I travel there every couple of weeks, uh, every couple of months. And when I went to talk to the people there, because always someone knew was starting, and I'd do an induction to say, talk about the business, and sometimes I'd say to them, if your friend asks you, where do you work, what do you say? Because actually if you say, I work at Walters Kluwer, it's a Dutch company that I'd sold to, and, uh, and then I do accounting software, that sounds really boring, doesn't it? <laughs> Who do you want, do you want to tell your friend that you do software for accounting <laughs> in, in this place? And then I'd say to them, uh, and often that, that's what, that was the truth. I'd say, I, I work in doing the accounting software. And I said, this is not what we do here. Okay? I'd go in there and say, why do we exist as a business? I'd get the, it's not about writing software for accountants. What I wanted us to do was to improve the profit and the success of every small and micro business. I love people who go into business, you know, just the little ones. Someone who has a chair shop, chai shop. You know, like everyone, you would know, everyone here would know someone in business, wouldn't you? So, uh, and you know what? Most businesses fail. This is the problem. And so my why for what I was actually doing was saying, I want to fix that. This is the problem I want to fix. And how will I do that? I will connect them with their accountant. 
this is the trusted person, I'll automate their accounting. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot of things I try and do. But anyway, it's important for you to figure out the why. Okay, so you might have a great idea and a great product, you know, for what you could do, but you have to figure out what's the difference you're making. Why would you exist? Why would anyone want this? So work that out. The other thing that's really important for a business, so I was saying have a clear vision. And I want you to, I want you all in a way, since if you all said I'm going to start a business one day, I'd go fantastic. Mm. You do that. Don't live your life not doing this. <coughs> then what pain are you solving? Okay? So every business, you know, one of the worst things that can happen is for engineers make a, bit, make a product, or they make some software, and sometimes I'll say the only person who wants that product is them. <laughs> <laughs> the only person who thinks this piece of software is good or cool is them. So you actually have to look at it and say, what pain are you solving? What, you know, uh, what problem are you solving? And the bigger the opportunity, um, nobody will pay you to solve a non-problem. Okay. So you must think in those terms. What is the problem? What are you fixing? Um, why would someone want to buy this product or this service, service from you? Okay? Actually, I watched a Steve Jobs film on the way over here. Um, so the latest film, if who has seen the latest film? Yeah. So there's two, this is the latest one. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mostly about his daughter, isn't it? Yeah, mainly about his Mainly about his relationship with his yeah. daughter. But right at the very end, he said to his daughter, you know, right at the very end, he said to her, I am going to put a thousand songs in your pocket. Okay, he said that, didn't he? Yes. And so, so that, why, why did he say, what problem was he fixing? Or what was the pain? What was his daughter listening to? I'll guess it, yeah. Yeah, cassette player. Are you old enough to even know? Do you know what this is? <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big box. <laughs> and it could only play how many songs on a cassette? Maybe 10 songs. That's all it could do. And she had this big box around it and he said, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that problem and I'm going to put a thousand uh, songs into that. So you must look at things like this. You know, so, and actually he was very successful, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, but iPhone. So I have an iPhone, I know I'm at a Microsoft, but you know, <laughs> I have, the, I have the, the, the Microsoft Windows, so I like Windows 10, there you go. Steve Jobs, at a board meeting, was Apple making phones? No, no, no. no, they didn't make any phones. And at a board meeting, he said to his board, I want to make a phone. Do you know what the board said to him? No, no. <laughs> you can't do that. What a stupid idea. Um, we all have phones. All of them, everyone sitting at the table has a phone. A Nokia phone, I don't know, you know, the Nokia was the big phone at the time. There were lots of people who had phones. So then he got it out, then he said to them, okay, this is why I want to make a phone. I want you to enter into the phone the name and address of a contact. Then I want you to send a text to them and make a call to them and send an email to them. Go. So then, this is what I understand, so people on the board, you know, back then that was hard to do. Every phone was different, there was no standards, actually even if you could get the name and address and then there's some other menu to do the text, uh, email may not be on there, there's all these, it's a big problem. So then at the end of the demonstration, he said, that's why I want a phone. <laughs> Look at you, you're all hopeless, you know, you all got different phones, you all took 15 minutes to do a thing that I can do in one minute. This is what I want. So the, understand, so I think it's exciting. You can look around you today, especially with the, the mobile phone and apps. And, um, and these are here, aren't they? You know, a trip I did, I think maybe two years ago to here, I went to a place called Bertie Bung in uh, Bagrung District. You know, who knows Bertie Bung? Okay, so it's a long way, it's a long way away. <laughs> I was there and, uh, and I went over the river and up the hill for another hour over there. And up there was um, a woman, um, and I say quite a, an, older, an older woman, it's her face is wrinkled, I don't know how old she was, and she, uh, she had two phones. <laughs> <laughs> two phones, two smartphones. <laughs> and, then on, and then on this other one. And I thought, wow, uh, Nepal has really changed. <laughs> really changed, you know, like, uh, when we were back here to, to um, communicate with someone was three days walk. 
to, to try and get there is a long way away. So because of this technology, actually because of Microsoft uh, technologies, there were many problems you can solve. You have to think up here, and, but you must be solving pain. You must know your why, and you must have a really clear vision for where you end up. Because if you can't articulate that to yourself, then you won't be able to do it to someone else and, and, you, and you can't be successful. Does that make sense? These are big things that you, that you have to do. <clears throat> okay. Another thing I think you must do is to be strategic. Who here plays chess? Or has played chess? You know, I used to play when I was a boy. Um, and, uh, you know, I like chess. So many options and... And, then, and you know, I like winning. Do you like winning? You like beating the other person? You know, I, I, I'm smarter than you. I thought, I thought of something. <laughs> but chess, more than other games, is strategic, isn't it? The, the, the person who does the best at chess thinks ahead. You know, like the people who are really clever at chess, how many times, how far in front can they think? How many moves in front? Do you know? It's nine. Sorry? Nine. Nine, yeah, I think I've read that some of the really, really clever people can think almost 20 moves in front. Um, so, you know, I'm not like this, I can think two or three, you know. <laughs> but, um, but it's all about strategy, isn't it? It's this strategy. If I play this one and then they play that, the ha, then I'll play this and then I think that they might play that and then ah, I'll play that. <laughs> Checkmate, you know, okay. And so business is like that. Okay? It's just the same. It's a strategy. Like sport. You know, if you want to win a sport sometime in a team, you have a strategy for how to beat the competitor. So, first of all, I, sometimes I say, because depending on the culture you're in, I'm going to say you need to want to win. So, I don't know for you, I don't know for Nepal so much, but actually our, in New Zealand, our education our system changed. And what happened a little bit was that we started to say to the children, everybody wins. Everybody is a winner, there are no losers, and everybody wins. I don't think this is true. <laughs> okay, and I think if you want to be successful, I mean, it's different about how we treat each other and look after each other and that sort of thing, but if you want to be successful, you must want to win. Okay, and then you must have a strategy for this. And, it's not, and for me, there's nothing wrong with wanting to win. You should be long and say, yeah. um, I'm going to develop this application. Here are some competitors over here. Usually there's always some competitors. And when you're thinking up, you're going to say, I'm going to beat the competitors. And you're working out a strategy for how, for how to do that. I think it's fun. It's like chess. And, uh, but you need to do that. You need to work it out. Um, okay. What's the plan? This is, um, this is a big deal. I'm going to talk about uh, this for a bit. And I mentioned at the, at the beginning, because this is true for your life as much as it is um, for a business. So sometimes I'll just say, uh, for a business to succeed, it must have a plan. Do you know what, in, this, in New Zealand, I don't know for the case here, but I imagine it is the same. Out of you know all the businesses in New Zealand, there are maybe 350, 400,000 businesses. 95% of them will not have a plan. If you talk to the business owner um, and say, "What's the plan?" Then they'll they'll say, "Oh, I have a plan to uh, make some money. <laughs> you know, my plan is to be successful." And all that is is just a uh, thought up here, but there is nothing written down. And I'd argue. I've gone in to try and help businesses. I remember a business a while ago I'd asked to have a look at, and it was in big trouble. This is a business with 100 staff, and there's a, there's a lot of people's jobs at stake and that sort of thing, and the directors on, in that business asked me to come in and have a look. Can you give me some advice on what to do? So I had a look at I talked to lots of people in the, in the business, and I talked to the directors, and I had a look at what the business was doing. And then when I went to uh, see the board there, I said to them this. And it has quite offended them. I said, you have got what you planned for. They were in big trouble. They were going to go broke. And everyone was going to lose their job. And, lots of, and I said, you have got 
what you plan for. Now they looked at me and they're unhappy with me saying that because we, they were then saying, we did not plan for this <laughs> and we did not want this. But then I was trying to say to them, nowhere in that business could I find the plan, the strategy, the goals, the actions, the activities to be successful. I couldn't find it anywhere. Some people would say this, some people would say that. There was nothing written down. I couldn't go in there and say, give me your business plan. Because when you work out the plan, um, then, then, then it becomes that much easier. So there is a saying, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. <clears throat> this is true. I'll stop here for a bit and talk to you about because this is true for your life as much as it is for a business. So for me, it, it took me a long time now before I actually got to this. And so now I want to tell you also that I write down a life plan for me. <clears throat> I have my family, I have my children, but this is for me. For what do I want to do with my life? I write this down every year. It's e easier to do from year to year because the first one is the hardest one. I won't ask you to do, but I suspect that most of you here, if I said, can you give me your written life plan, you probably can't. Okay, And I find it it's because I know I was the same. And I'd say, look, if you did nothing else from today, I'm pleased that you came along and, and we could meet and talk. If you did nothing else but went home and actually got out a piece of paper and wrote down, the plan for my life is, and you start writing that down, then I'd be really happy. This will make a huge difference to your life if you just do this. Here's the thing. This so good. I, I imagine, does everyone here have a computer? Yes. Uh, you have a phone too, don't you? Yes. You have a phone. Yeah, um, Ellen, you'll be pleased to hear, even on my iPhone, the, thing, the application I use for writing down plans and thoughts and ideas is OneNote. Okay, it's free. It's very good price. You know, so you can get you can get this on your phone, and so it's very good for keeping the lists and plans, and you you can have tabs and all sorts of things. You have no excuse, absolutely none. Not one of you here has an excuse not to have something down. My life plan. This is what I do, and I break this plan down, and you'll get better. For a start, I just say when I wrote my first plan, which I wasn't in. I only did this when I was in my mid thirties. You know, let's say thirty five or something. So probably older than most of you. Because it took me a long time to actually get to this point. Um, but now, I, as you can see, I, I try and say to everyone, you should all do this, because that changed my life. Just trying to get down and say, well, this is what I want for my life, what I want for me, what I want for my family, what I want for Cheryl, what I want for my children, what I want for my finances, what I want for my spiritual life, uh, what I want for my education and learning. Um, uh, actually, and then I put down I used to have a section called Wild and Crazy Ideas, okay? And because I'm older, you could, this is a good section for you, you are younger. Wild and Crazy Ideas. Everything, you know, when do you get those wild and crazy ideas? I think when you dream. <laughs> Don't you sometimes in the middle of the night you go, I want to do this, or you had the dream about something. Now you get, you get out the phone and you write it down. This is what I want to do. Cause the, when you wake up, you go, oh, I had a really good idea and I've forgotten <laughs> what it is. But you, you write it down. So I had a session called Wild and Crazy Ideas. <coughs> I've been keeping this for, for many years. I changed the title because I'm older. Yeah. <laughs> right, so now I change my title to Things to Do Before I Die. <laughs> and now I look at, oh, you know, I'm getting older. <laughs> I better do this one and do this one and do this one. So if you did nothing else, from today, but you went home and you put it on your phone, on your computer, you started a document. Mine's just a document that says, this is my plan for my life. Do you want to have a successful life? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Of course you do. Then make a plan to have a successful life. This is about as simple as that. You get what you plan for. You want to be successful? Write out the plan. Writing out the plan for me, also when you write it out, Sometimes you look at it and go, mm, that's not a good idea. <laughs> or this one, this one I don't think I can do. And sometimes you, there's other things you can do. You should share that with some, sometimes the people who you really trust. And they'll help you and mentor you and that sort of thing. And I know I've, I've changed a little bit. But I'm saying I, 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 I know it was so good for me that it, from that point, it was later that I started the business. And that I've always lived by this because somebody told me. 
It wasn't me who thought of it. Somebody told me, Mike, you are drifting. You, you know, you, you don't have a clear plan for your life. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And failure might not be a big thing, but it's just saying you didn't achieve much. Life is short, you never know what is going to happen tomorrow, the next week, the next month, the next year. You should have a plan to be successful. And write that out. This is exactly true for the business. And so as much as I know I change subject a little bit, not subject, it's the same thing. Do this for your life. It's the best thing you could do, but it's actually absolutely true for business. And if you know people in business, and they, say they come to you and say, oh, business is really hard. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not making any money. And, you know, there are not enough, actually, at the hotel I'm staying at, there are not enough tourists, you know, <laughs> um, here. This is a big problem for me. Uh, to some degree, I'd say to him, what is your plan? What is your plan to fix this? Do you want your hotel full? What's the plan? How are you going to make your hotel full? If you really sat down and wrote out the plan, this is what I'll do, and this is what I'll do to grow my business, and this is what I'll do to improve my margin, or to actually sell the room for a higher rate, and all these things. If you worked all that out in a plan, then you're likely to be successful. It's the single biggest thing I'd say you have to do. And there's other things I'm telling you, but this is the single biggest thing. If you w will not write it down, then I, I think you, you will not be successful. You have a big chance of not being successful. Okay. Part of writing down the plan is to set goals. So have you heard of this before, the SMART goals? Who's heard of that saying? You have? Or no, are you just <laughs> scratching? <laughs> no. So SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound. Because if you put down a goal saying, I want to be rich, or you know, whatever, something, something like this, how can you measure this? You can't, you can't measure it. So you must put down very specific goals, goals that you can measure, um, goals that are attainable. I don't mind the goal being stretched, but you actually can still say, I can, get, I can reach this goal if I really push myself. Goals that are relevant and goals that are time bound. You know, this is my goal for this week, this month, this year, this five years. So you work them all out. <coughs> so that is certainly part of the business plan. And you could even, as part of your life plan, is to write down your goals, okay? I personally, one of the things, and it will depend on your personality a little bit, <clears throat> some people will write down goals that are easy to get. And then I go, well, this doesn't push you that much. <laughs> I've always written down goals that uh, stretch. And to some degree, there's another <clears throat> American guy in business, a guy called Jack Welsh. Who ran, he was the CEO of General Electric. There's, he had lots of good books from him. He would always say to have stretch goals. And it was better to, ha to get 80% of a stretch goal than 100% of a small goal. So I'm a fan for that. It's a wee bit your personality type. So you must understand your personality type. Because for some people, like for me, I'm okay with this. Because then I get to the end of the year, actually, in my business, understand I started a business with no money. I made a plan, okay? I couldn't be telling you that, <laughs> to make a plan, and I didn't know. I wrote out all the plan, I wrote out all the numbers and all that, and I had a big plan uh, to make a million dollars profit. This is a lot of money you know, for me. I had made no profit, okay? But I, I listed out all the plan, made all the actions I was gonna do, all the software we are gonna create, uh, all the budgets and, and, and this to do, to do it. This is a big goal, because I'd never done it. And so a couple of things I'll tell you. The first thing was, that year that I made this plan, I think I made $10,000. So I missed it, I missed my target, totally. You know, I only just made enough money to stay alive <coughs> and to survive. So one, I was learning how, how to do this. I was, I'm ambitious, I have these big goals. Second thing I point I say, so look, you don't want to be this far out, um, but it's okay to stretch yourself, because you're always stretching up here, think, okay, this didn't work, how do I try this, now how to try something else, okay? Second thing I say to people, especially if you're in a starting a business, then um, actually I did make a million dollars profit in the third year. So I had my timing out. 
okay? But I knew that it was partly that I stretched myself and I pushed a goal out there and then I tried to work backwards to say, how will I reach this goal? What are the things I'm going to do? Who do I need to employ? What are the products I'm going to make? How am I going to do all of this to reach this goal? So I did actually get there, and so that's why I say it's important to write it down. Because <coughs> it's just part of the plan. Write it out, figure it out, adjust it. Okay. One of the things I meant to say to you about the plan was that these days, um, you carry it with you. Some people with business plans think they write down the business plan. How, long, how much longer have I got, Alan? So I could keep on track. Well, because um, I'm just talking and talking. <laughs> You look half interested, so I'll keep going. <laughs> but um, one of the things is that um, some, I've seen some people write down the plan, okay? And so they make, a, they make this uh, a job. Uh, you, you, you could listen to me and say, oh, I must write out the plan. So you, by Saturday, you write it all out, and then, and then you put it in the filing cabinet. Now, I've done this job. And I go, the plan is a living, breathing uh, document. And so that's why I say you carry it with you. In the older days, when you didn't have that, I, um, I printed it out and it was in my bag. Every day in my bag. And so sometimes if I'm on a plane or I'm opening up something, I look at it and I read it again. Oh yes, did I, I said I'd do this. And I'm always referring to the plan. You are, by the way, allowed to change the plan. <laughs> I've never seen anyone yet write a perfect plan for their life um, or their business and just go tick, 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 tick. It never works like this, okay? But, you know, something will not work, and I'll just go, that's okay, adjust the plan. It's allowed. But it, to me, understand it's a living, breathing document that you keep with you all the time, you always look at, you always can refer to, you always motivate yourself by it, so it's a good thing. Okay, so do smart goals. Taking risks. <laughs> I think this picture is made up. You know, that's <laughs> the real risk is doing nothing. One of the things you must do is, uh, is try, you know, like if you're going into business and even for your life you can have some big goals and plans, it will mean you take a risk. And one of the problems you might well get is sometimes uh, taking the risk you may even find that your family, uh, your friends, um, tell you not to do it. And so it's quite a big thing that you actually have to, I think, you have to take risk. You actually almost have to like risk, okay? And being entrepreneurial, I just go, yeah, I like, you know, I like being entrepreneurial, I like taking the risk. It's a calculated risk. I'm not being stupid. I totally accept that some things will not work, that some things will fail. Uh, but if I'm going to do that, then um, actually it's a Microsoft thing sometimes I've heard, fail quickly. <laughs> you're gonna fail, do it fast. <laughs> and then, uh, then change. Because now you look at this idea, it did not work, so you change to something else. Oh, we have some tea. I'll, I'll stop for a minute and you, you can, sh we hand it around, or shall I keep talking while? Please go on. Okay, I'll keep going, okay. One of the things um, that I found really hard to do personally was to lose money. I don't know for you, but you know, like here's my business and I'm trying this idea over here and then this one and this one, and it all adds up to being I'm gonna be really successful, okay? The plan is the bit, now I have to do it. Now I start to do this thing here, it doesn't work. <laughs> the people didn't buy the product or something like this. And uh, so one of the things I've learned to do is to, well, where to cut off? but I've learned to accept that not every idea is a good one. And that sometimes you'll lose. And this is why some people don't go into business, because they're too, they cannot take the risk. And they're too scared to take the risk. And then you might have friends or family saying, don't do that, you know. And I'm gonna say, if you wanna be successful, you have to do it. Every successful entrepreneur and business person I've met, see, sometimes you'll only read the book or you'll see the movie, and you'll think their whole life is a success. It's not. There are many things that they will say, oh, I did this, it was really bad, I lost all this money over here, and then this thing had failed. This is more the reality, but it's calculated. So anyway, just in case you are scared or thinking that you don't want to take the risk, or you, you know, then I'm trying to say to you, you must learn how to lose money and for something not to work. It is okay. 
The worst thing I've seen with people losing money or something not working, and sometimes this is engineers will do this, some of you might be engineers here, they keep thinking they can fix it. <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> So sometimes I've seen this, sometimes even with software, I don't know any of you who are writing software here, I've seen the developers I've hired, they're trying something really different and they're coding it and it's not working. And they'll say, oh, it's not working. And they say, don't worry, I'll keep going. <laughs> and you go and go and go, and I just say, you're going down the wrong street. At the end of that street is a dead end. <laughs> stop. Stop, you know, this is a bad idea, stop it here, and start another idea, okay? So, but you have to take risk. <coughs> I've just got a little note on here on taking risk, is to do your market research. So if you have an idea again for a product or some <coughs> software out there, you must validate it that there are, there's someone else in the world thinks it's a good idea as well. This is the way, you know, something I've seen people think, I have this amazing invention, this great idea, this good software. And like I said, the only person who thinks this is them. <laughs> and so you must go out and find it. Other people will say to you, this is a great idea. Here's a problem. Okay? And I experienced this. I had some software, and we're, uh, I live in New Zealand, and I went over to Australia, and I <coughs> talked to some uh, prospective customers, and I said, what do you think of this product? And, you, want, you know, I'll come over here, we could sell this to you. I talked to 20 people, 20 different businesses say, do you like what we're doing here? And, uh, you know, I asked them to look at the software. Every one of them said, yes, we like you. I'm not sure, but, you know, we like the software. Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> what happened to me was that no, uh, so we decided to go to Australia and sell our software there as well. How many of those 20 people bought it? None. <laughs> Not one. Okay, so, and actually that was my fault. The reason is I only asked the questions I wanted to get a yes to. <laughs> okay? It's very easy to make this mistake. You actually must go and uh, do some good market research and ask the right questions. And sometimes asking the right question is saying, okay, will you pay me for this? <laughs> and if they say yes, well then good. Pay me now. <laughs> you know, like, jump in there. You, know, like, but you, have to, you have to do the market research and you have to do the proper market research. Don't just go, you know, uh, I'm, I think this is great, so therefore everybody will think it's great. This is not true. And then also don't fall into the trap. Um, look, I met someone in uh, Singapore on the way over. You know, and, uh, and they were going to be a distributor for a little product that a company I've invested in that makes a little mouse. And they are in Hong Kong. And our sales guy from this company went to Hong Kong, visited this distributor, and then visited a number of um, Apple stores and premium gadget stores and went around these stores. And uh, he came back and said to us, they all want this. They think this is a great product. I'm sitting in Singapore, this is only a couple of days ago, with this distributor, he said, do you know what? Nobody wants it. And I said, what happened there? He said, they were just polite. Stephen, uh, talk, 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 talk. This is one of the problems. You have to listen. <laughs> Stop talking <laughs> and start listening. He did all the talking, he did no listening, and so they were just polite to him. Oh, yes, you know, you're a good person. Yes, I like the product, and yes, the price is okay. Yes, 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 yes. He comes back, he failed to listen. He failed to do the, uh, the proper uh, research and find out the truth. And sometimes people will want to be polite to you and say yes, because they don't want to say your idea is stupid. It's only friends or people who are close to you who have the, hopefully have the courage to say, this is not a good idea, um, the software is no good. You, know, you need people around you who will tell you the truth. And you need to ask the right questions and do the right research. Okay? It's quite a hard thing, isn't it? Because we all want to think, hey, this is really good. <laughs> and then I go and show a whole lot of it, yes, you are really clever, the product is really good, you know. And so you just feel really good. <laughs> and then you go to sell it and nobody buys it. <laughs> then you have a big problem. Okay? How to be successful? You focus, focus, focus. <clears throat> One of the lessons I learned when things were not working. So for me, my business was selling software to accounting firms. We have accounting firms here. Anyway. And it was, I was finding it was very hard. 
So one of the temptations that came to me, one of the things that happened was, so I thought, oh, maybe I sell to lawyers. It's very similar. And so look, I can tell you that in business, uh, many people will come to you and say, I like this, but I'd like you to make a change. Uh, don't make it like this, make it just like this. And then you meet someone else and say, oh, it's okay, but not quite okay. So now make it like this. And then someone will come to you and say, you shouldn't do this. And you come in, you shouldn't do this. You should do this over here. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you. You should do this. So, so you'll get uh, many distractions and many, many thoughts about what else to do. And I'll go, look, the person who wins at sport, the person who wins, you know, sometimes in, uh, in education and university, the person who wins in business, my view is that they're really focused. Okay, and all the distractions that come in, you, you, can, you push them away. You, you stay focused on your idea, on your plan, on your goal. And I'm telling you, the, the distractions will come all the time. Everything, there's the voices, the people will tell you, that, and you think, oh, it's maybe better to do something else. I'm not saying don't listen to uh, feedback. That's another issue. But you must stay focused. And so uh, that's the key. <clears throat> Same for your life. When you write out, you now you're going to write out your life plan tonight. <laughs> And you know, you write that out, stay focused on this is what you want for your life, stick with it. You know, like I said, you can change your plan a little bit and, and ideas, but if you know what you want, then stick with that and stay focused on that. <coughs> uh, I'm just reading some text, okay. Oh, this is a good picture actually, it looks better when you get the thing, but. Fish and the birds open. I'm off. <laughs> One other thing, there's many pictures, but for you to be successful in business, I'm going to say this is something that is true for all the people who have been successful. They do not give up. So, as much as you get the feedback and you get the knockbacks and things, plans don't work, you just don't give up. Okay? So it's part of your characteristic. You know, you should be a stubborn person who just say, "I have the goal. I'm going to get there." And so it's part of what you, part of what you do. Here's something that will happen to you. When you, if you want to do this, you never give up. Sometimes you'll feel very lonely. I can remember saying uh, sometimes that nobody understands me. <laughs> nobody gets it. And uh, and, and I I, com I did a, made a complaint to the chairman of my board. Um, I was the CEO of the business, I had my management team, I had lots of people working with me, and then I had a meeting with him, I said, nobody <laughs> understands me, nobody gets this and all that. And then he looked at me and he said, this is your job. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what you signed up for. If you want to be an entrepreneur, and you want to be successful, sometimes you'll feel all alone. Okay, so it's just, it's just part of what happened but never give up, it's part of who you are. I'm sure you have this feeling, and then I just go feed, feed it. <laughs> it's a good thing to never, to never give up. I've got down here again, you know, um, Bill Gates, since I'm in Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> so there's one story I, can, I remember reading, and I've read lots about, uh, about him, and uh, you know, uh, Paul and Bill started Microsoft, two people. And I don't know, how many people work in Microsoft now, Alan? 150,000? 150,000, it was two people. So you were two people here. You know, it was you and your friend. You know, you could start something. Anyway, um, and you should be encouraged by that, because it is possible. Okay. Um, I read one ch a chapter on Bill uh, was encyclopedias. Okay, so there used to be, if you wanted to get the encyclopedia, it was Encyclopedia Britannica. Can you remember? Or your parents might remember. And this was very expensive. Yet it was all printed, and people would have it on the on the, uh, on the light, you know, on their shelf, and all these things. I'd be very proud of it. All these books, so much money to get this. And uh, I read a chat that Bill Gates said, "I forget all this. I put the whole encyclopedia onto a CD, and then that that product was called Encarta." Anyway. But here's the story, that he went to his board and said, this is what I want to do. I want to take something that costs thousands of dollars 
and make it available for fifty dollars. What did his board say to him? You can't do it. You can't do it. This is a bad idea. Do you know what he did? Because it actually happened. He didn't give up. So even though he was a big shareholder in the company, he didn't give up. You know, he got rejected. This is one of the things that happens in business, and sometimes in life. <laughs> you get rejected. <laughs> don't give up. You know, like, is it don't quit on the first hurdle. You keep on going. So he didn't give up. He went back to the board, must have changed the plan a little bit, convinced them some more, and didn't, and, and didn't give up. Here's another one I asked today. In Nepal here you have KFC. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible, isn't it? This is awful stuff. <laughs> you know, it'll make you fat. <laughs> anyway, but, but the, the person who started that business is a, is a guy called, he was called Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay. Do you know when he started that business? What age he was? He had retired, he had finished work. So he's an, he's an old person, even older than me. Okay. He was in the mid-60s, mid I think. And he had this recipe for making the chicken with the outside, the finger licking good. But anyway, he thought this was good. And he, um, I, used to, I used to eat it, but you know, it's not, it's not good for you. <laughs> but um, he went around America trying to find someone who would help him make this into a business. He had no money. He had the recipe. Um, so he went to see many people and said, I have a good chicken recipe. And so then, uh, and I want to do something with this. Will you invest in this or something like this? So how many times do you think he got turned down? People said, I don't like the recipe, I don't like you. You know, He got turned down over a thousand times. Rejected. A thousand times. Can you tell? I, so I use this to inspire me, you know, so, so, and so, so should you. He, did he quit? He didn't quit. Actually, he became a very wealthy person. Started this whole business in stores all over the world. He never quit. Actually, he did, had no money. He couldn't afford to stay in the hotel, so he slept in his car. He's an older guy. I, I really admire that. He would not quit because he believed that he had a good chicken recipe. <laughs> Some of you here might like it, so <laughs> it was a good chicken recipe, and he didn't quit. So there, there, there are many examples. You'll find people here in Nepal who are like this, and they're, they're all over the world. And one of the factors then is you will not quit. You will not give up. So be like that, okay? <laughs> don't, 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 knock it, don't get knocked over. When, someone, <laughs> when somebody rejects you, just go, okay, you know? <laughs> You saw all the other factors are there about the know your why, you have a clear vision, the problem you're solving, you understand all of these things, keep understanding that, you are, you are right, and so you can make this into a business. Uh, but do not quit. So this is something for business more than, you know, more than for your life, but I've, I've got sell, 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 okay? So I've seen, I, you know, because I'm old enough now, I've seen quite a few businesses fail. <clears throat> and the reason is because they do not put the effort, um, the money, the time into sales. And often, the, often businesses, and it's particularly true for in New Zealand, I don't know for you what your career is or what you're doing, but engineers, actually engineers are clever people. <clears throat> you know, like engineers, I've employed lots of them. And they have a clever brain, a better brain than mine. And, but one of the, sometimes I say they have a design fault <coughs> as well. And their design fault is that they're always trying to make the thing perfect. And uh, make the product perfect, make the software perfect. And, and so they keep working to make the thing um, more perfect. And then they never, um, get, they never focus on and make the effort to make the sales. It's really simple. No sales equals no money. Yeah, good. Which equals no business. <laughs> you have no sales, you know. I've said that to lots of people in the companies I'm involved with, in the business. Hey, no sales, no business. So I always, here's one of the things, especially if you're an engineer. The problem is you'll have to hire people who, <clears throat> who probably don't have as many brains as you. These are the sales people. And these are the people who go rah, 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 rah. And, uh, you know, and I want the phone, and I want the car, and I want the money, and I want the commissions, rah, 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 rah. 
and you're going, oh, these people are so painful. <laughs> you need salespeople. And if you came to my business, I used to come when you, the lift came to the middle of the, of the floor, and I would say to the people, over this side of the business are lots of clever people. Actually, they all have a headset on. <laughs> They're very good with talking to the computer and not with anyone else. But you know, but they're clever people. They make software. They're very clever. I highly respect them. Over this side of the business, this is where I, I live and work, and a whole lot of other people, we're the rah, 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 <laughs> we're the people. Do you know what? And we do the sales. Do you know why this business works? And I, we ended up being quite successful. Both people like each other. <laughs> they respect each other. I respect you have lots of brains and you can make great stuff, but the people over there that, that were doing this, they respected that you need people to sell. So one of the problems I've seen is uh, uh, engineer-driven businesses don't hire salespeople. Or if they do, they hire a salesperson and the salesperson will go, rah, 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 I'm really good, I can sell many things, and they never do. And then they finally, they fire them, and they, or they leave, and they go, phew, I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, you must do it again. You must just go, look, this is, a, this is a failure. It didn't work. You must hire salespeople. You must sell things. Every business sells, doesn't it? No sales equals no business. Don't wait to perfect the, the, the product. A quote from Steve Jobs, actually, that um, somebody wrote that I like. He says, real CEOs ship. You want to make money. You know, so uh, Apple is the most uh, uh, valuable country, uh, company in the whole world. Okay, and it still is today. Um, so, but, and he, he said a quote which I, I try and live by, real CEOs ship. And actually there's a good example of it. And so uh, the iPhone 4, if you go back, had a problem, didn't it? Can you, anyway, Anyone can remember that version of the of the phone and the problem it had? Reception. It was the reception, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Real CEO ship. I reckon that it, behind all of that, he thought, I must deliver my numbers, I must have sales, I must look after my shareholders, I must be successful. Ship it. Okay, I'll fix the problem later. So this is very hard for an engineer. <laughs> very hard for an engineer to do this. A salesperson, ship it. Make the sales. <laughs> we'll fix the problem later. <laughs> this is how I am. And actually, I think it's okay. I mean, I'm not asking you to be stupid, but I think it's okay that you must, you must focus on sales, you must ship the product and get that. Actually, I say to people, sometimes I, uh, when I'm asked to advise a business, then I'll say, create a problem. Okay, I want you to create a problem. Okay, and then they're looking at you and go, ooh, you know, what are you going to say? <laughs> I want you to create a sales problem. Okay, this is the problem I want you to make. I want you to have more sales than you can handle. Why do I say this? You know, so then actually if you do too many sales sometimes, then the phone is ringing, the people are complaining, they can't get hold of you, all of these problems. And I go, this problem is easy to fix. <laughs> and if you have made the sales, you have the money, and if you have the money, you can hire people. This is how I think. And I actually think it works. Um, but if you, have, if you don't have the sales, and you don't have the money, who are you going to be having a conversation with? The bank. <laughs> <laughs> the parents. Or, or something. You're going to have this conversation. That's a, I don't want that conversation. I can handle a customer who is unhappy. I can hire someone else to do, give more support. And do the, I can do all of this because I focused on sales. So if you're wanting to have a business, then I'll say you should be dreaming and sleeping and eating and thinking <coughs> sales. Okay? No sales, no business. Sell, sell, sell. Actually, sometimes I ask, you know, for my first business, when I came back from Nepal, the $200. And, um, and someone came to see me, and so we had nothing. You know, look, I, the car I had was a really bad car. So I'd park it around the corner, I thought if a customer sees me in that car, they'll never buy anything from me. <laughs> so I'd hide the car, and, uh, and, uh, and I'd carry the computer to them, and I'd show, uh, show them uh, these things. 
um, to make the sale. And someone came to see me, and look, I was up against really big competitors, uh, public companies, they had lots of money, I had nothing, nothing. And someone came to see me and said, how come in, uh, for our product, we became the 70% market share? Number one supplier, this is my goal, number one supplier, 70% market share. And someone said to me, uh, how did you do this? One of my answers, I mean there's lots of things which is I'm telling you today, but one of my answers was I just thought and said, ah, I hired more salespeople than you. <laughs> 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 and they sort of look at you and go, oh, is that it? <laughs> you know, go, yeah, it was, it was. You didn't hire the salespeople? I did. <laughs> only, uh, by the way, I only hire salespeople who sell. Yeah. All salespeople, you know, all salespeople, I don't know whether any of you are salespeople, and I'm a salesperson, I've learned to be a salesperson. All salespeople can sell one thing. Well, what is the one thing a salesperson can sell well? Everything. 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 Yeah, themselves. They're really good at selling themselves. So, you know, in the interview, they'll be good. They can sell themselves. I'm great. I, this, I, this. You know, you know, I'm really good. You're lucky you can see me. I can, I'll do this for you. Okay? And they sell themselves. And I'll say, here's the trick. You, you will find out very quickly where they can sell anything else. <laughs> so they can sell themselves, but, but then you have a product or you have a service and you must sell it. <coughs> and here's what I do. Uh, for people who, can't, who cannot sell anything else other than themselves, after three months, for me I say, <laughs> no, no, you, not for me. <laughs> you can go somewhere. And in fact, you know, the person who doesn't make any sales, do you know where you should get them to go? You know, you, they shouldn't work for you. So I advise them to go and work for the competitor. <laughs> this would be a good place for you, over here. <laughs> make sure you make no sales there as well. <laughs> so this is where you send them, okay? But it, I, I talk a bit longer about it again because people, I see people do not make the sales. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people even, for, you, for those of you who are engineers and that sort of again, sales, oh, I don't know. You know, if I came to you say, what do you do? Do you do sales? Oh, no, I wouldn't do sales. <laughs> uh, and it sort of feels like as you're doing something bad. The world needs good salespeople. And by the way, we all sell. You sell yourself to your friend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we always, we always sell, everybody sells to everyone. But don't be afraid of sales. Like sales. Like, um, love salespeople and employ them and get them to uh, make the sales for you. You have to do this. Building the team. This is also something that is hard, you know, like the big decision for me was I left a job. I had a mortgage for the house, I had two children under five, uh, Cheryl was not working. <coughs> Everything is on me um, to pay the bills and, and this sort of thing. And the hardest thing, I used to do everything myself. I was only me. I would. Uh, I'd do test the software, I'd sell the software, I'd install the software. I used to even carry a screwdriver back in those days. I'd do the computer, I'd look it up, and, ooh, look at that. You know, with, play, play with the wires or something, try and make it all go. I'd do everything. It just, uh, and it was just me. And I had a person come to see me, um, ask me to see them. And I thought, oh, good, good. Do you know why? I thought they wanted to buy something. <laughs> so, yeah, straight around, yeah, how, how can I help you? And uh, there was someone who knew me a little bit, and he said, Mike, if you do not hire someone, You'll, you'll lose your marriage, you might die, and you'll never have a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot this. You see, you must hire someone. And actually, I was, I was scared to hire someone. I thought, I can, I can handle myself, I can handle failures, I handle hiring someone, <coughs> I'm responsible for their, their salary now. And uh, well, this, that was almost harder for me to do than it was to go into business myself. So I don't know for you, but now I look at it and go, and she is even we've been talking here, you know, uh, for that for our project. And uh, now I go to business and now I say, I'll see you know, you're really stressed out and you're looking worried and I say, hire someone. You must hire people. You'll never do it on your own. Have you seen someone really say they're totally on their own? No. Uh, what you learn to do is hire good people. You know, that's another whole thing. But actually this is one of the things I read in Microsoft. Again, so I've read lots of Microsoft books because I thought, uh, for me, when I was going into business, I was looking to go, wow, these are really successful company, and there would be books on, you know, how they did it. And one of the things they said in the book I'd read was, 
<coughs> um, only hire the top 5%. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to hire lots of people. But, and it's quite, quite hard to say, you know, I'm going to narrow this down to just the top 5%. And actually, certainly for our developers, for our developers, um, we would make a test. I can remember going to India, um, trying to hire some developers there. We had the hotel room, we had computers set up there. We probably got um, over 100 people to come for this um, interview. I think it was maybe 150 <coughs> people came in and they did the test. How many people did we hire? Three. 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 Uh, so I had, you know, and uh, so, and, and then I'll just say, I mean, we grew from there. We have, in the, in the end, we had 70 people working there. But I'll just say, one of the tricks is to hire just the best. <coughs> Here, just in case you were thinking that maybe I'm really clever, or that I'm not so clever. <laughs> and so all I know is that I have to hire clever people. <laughs> and you know, one of one of the things that. One of the things that people are afraid of sometimes is that if they hire someone who is clearly smarter than them and better than them, you're going, oh, I will feel bad. You know, they are the, they are the really clever person. And I go, no, never think like that. In fact, you should always be hiring someone who is better than you and not to be afraid of this. This is a good thing. So this is one of the things you do. You must hire the 5%. Um, I hear something that is true. There's also, um, if you hire great people, you know, really clever people, and particularly this, I see this is true in uh, software development, those people want to work with great people and clever people. The worst thing you can do is hire someone, especially sometimes you feel pressure to think, oh, I really need more people, and so you, you hire someone and they're not so good. And if you leave them there in a group of really clever people who are performing, then in the end, the good people will go. So clever people, good people, hardworking people want to work with clever people, good people, hardworking people. Don't, don't, don't mix that up, okay? Well, this is something else. I was looking at my notes here. Where, is it, where are sometimes that, you know, you have the business, and every business will have competitors. And so one of the smart things you can do, I said with the salesperson who wasn't working, send them there. Okay, this is where you should go. One of the other things I've done in the past, they might have some really good people there. So you ring them up and say, hey, you should leave there and you should come over here. <laughs> but you should do that. I have no problem with that. You want to get the best team. The best team wins. I said before, do you want to win? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you should say, yes, I want to win. Then you need the best team. You need the best people. Where do you find them? They may be in your competitor. You work it out. You should approach them. You should never be afraid to do that if you want the best team and, and the best uh, the best team there. Yeah. Oh there. Oh whoops. Personalities. This is something that um, have any any of you done personality profiling, personality tests. Who has done this? Okay. Honestly. This is a big thing, actually. <clears throat> this is something, uh, so I, I'm going to encourage you, you should do this. There's Myers-Briggs. What, what, what have you done, Alicia? Is the Myers-Briggs one, or? Um, I think it's an online Okay. Oh, you can do that. You can. So there's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So there's Myers-Briggs. If you go back to there, you can do this online, actually, so you can be online. I, I for, for 10 years of my life, worked in an accounting firm. Okay, and then I also came in here, I was working in INF in Nepal, I was the accountant. This whole time, I never liked this job. <laughs> I could do this job, it was easy for me for some reason, I, I'm a numbers person, I can, I can do that. But I never liked this job. After I came back from Nepal to New Zealand, I did a personality profile test. And part of that test, um, I did it in a book called Please Understand Me. There's no right or wrong personality, okay? It's just who, who are you? And, and how do you think? And how do you behave? So I filled this book out and I ended up being with the letters, the <coughs> ESTJ uh, for the letters. And when you look up the career that suits you, it was an accountant, okay? <laughs> then my wife looked at it and said, 
this answer is wrong. <laughs> so I was this one, you were not like this, you were like that. <laughs> you were not like that, you were like this. And I thought for all the years, and because there's no right and wrong, it's just how do you behave in the, in the you know, when you go to a party, do you want to leave because you know, so many people there, so much noise, you want to be on your own, or do you go, oh, I like the noise, I like the people, I get energized, and these sort of things. This will define you as a person, and as a personality profile. So when my wife changed, uh, said these are the answers, and I looked and I said, she is right, <laughs> this is true, then I, we became an ESTP. So just one letter change, the J to the P. Then what am I most suited for? One of the things I'm most suited for is to be an entrepreneur. Actually is said, if you don't be an entrepreneur, then you might end up in prison. <laughs> an entrepreneur doing bad things <laughs> and so, so do good things okay so now this is a really big deal for me because it helped me go I'm going to leave accounting which I've never really liked and actually the irony is then I make a product to sell to accountants <laughs> this, will, this will be better but it helped me say actually almost look in the mirror and say this is who I am okay so this is a good thing for you too um, you could look it up online uh, maybe some other time, or you know, write to me and say, what was this book um, that you did? Here's the other trick, is I would go looking for someone with different personality uh, traits. So then when I'm trying to get to my team, I'm a balance. So actually the person, it was a woman called Stephanie, who was my right-hand person, who actually ran the business. I'm the rah, 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 and I can do the sales, and I can help motivate people and lead people. Stephanie was, uh, if I'm an E-N-S-P, um, she was an I, um, oh, I T N J, uh, J. you know, she's my dead opposite, okay, and actually we would clash sometimes, you know, um, because I was like, hey, you know, we're, we're opposite people, but I will say this, one of the secrets for my business being successful is that I had both people, all the different personality types, and that we are a team. And in actual fact, this compl you complement each other. The worst thing to do, I think, is you go and try and find people who are all just like you. Uh, what happens then? You know, you say, oh, I've got a great idea, we're going to do this, and you, everybody around you say, yeah, great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a good idea. Actually, I would say to Stephanie, hey, Stephanie, last night I was dreaming, I was thinking that I'd do this, and why don't we do that? And she'd look at me and say, stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this will never, and not just stupid, this will never work because you haven't thought of this, 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 and uh, you know, I'll go, you know, you are right. <laughs> That's what can happen in a dream, you skip all the steps, <laughs> you just think of the, the best bits. So, you, it's a good thing to know your personality profile. Here's something that actually happens to you as well. I know it's a little bit different here because the marriage can be arranged um, um, in, the, in the power, but your parents are looking, aren't they, as well? <laughs> Do you know what often happens? You end up, and for us, you know, say we have a love marriage, or I choose someone, or somebody chooses me, or something, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. But actually what happens is you often marry your opposite. Do you know why? I'll be the engineer, or the physicist, because opposites are trapped. Here's, how, here's a problem that happens. So this happened for me in my life as well, you know. So uh, my wife Cheryl, you know, she's really different. You know, she thinks really, oh, I really, this is, this is interesting. Uh, this is fun, I like this. And she is thinking that of me as well. And after a few years, you know, I'm saying, you are painful. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand me. <laughs> Why do you think like this? You know, this is, and, you, and then you have these clashes. So you have to work that out. I think still, um, you know, we had to go through some talks and discussions trying to understand it, even this book, trying to understand it. So it's a good thing. So this is for your life as well. But it certainly is for business. I have actively, everyone who comes to work for me, I say do this test. There is no right or wrong. I am just finding out who you are and how you fit. And then I also can understand your motivation. and this thing. It's a good thing to do. Letting people go. <coughs> this is one of the things, I don't know, I don't know how it is <coughs> here, but look, um, actually, one of the people I've read a lot about again is a guy called Jack Welsh who ran General Electric. And as far as I can tell, he ran one of the best HR programs in the world. So fundamentally for hiring the best people. He had a program called the Six Sigma program. 
And uh, so he worked out how do you test people, how do you find just the very best people. Here's the thing you need to know, if I cut it down to, let's take a look at my time here. Oh, I'll speed up a bit. Um, if you cut it down to, so he, he had this program to find the very best people. In his book, when he talks about that, he would still say one in five people, 20% will be no good. Okay, so sometimes I look at it and go, wow, I didn't do all the things he did. So I think maybe one in two people I choose are no good. And here's one of the secrets I've learned, is you must let them go. So sometimes, they, I mean, I have this slide here and go, Psh, you're fired. You know, it's not really like that. And you have many discussions. But if you have someone who is not in the team and is not working out for a whole lot of re and you, you will have made the decision to hire them, then I also go, you must have the courage in one sense to fire them or another sense to let them go. You know, you're better suited over here. But this is something I've learned. Sometimes saying lots of people are too scared to do this. You know, in a too, they find it too hard. But actually, you, you must do it if you want to have the best team. Actually, an, ana an analogy is sports, isn't it? So if you want the best uh, football team or the, you know, the best cricket team, then you're lifting the bar all the time, aren't you? And you get someone in, they don't make it. <laughs> Sorry. You have, to, you have to get the bar higher and you get the best people. The best team wins, not the best individual. It's always the best team, so you have to have the courage to do this. <clears throat> get organised. The company manual. So actually what often happens in a startup, and I'd be like this as well, um, you know, there's lots of energy and you're making this product and, you know, and you, then you find some customers and you make some sales. And actually, if you don't get organised or have a manual or a procedure or process on how to systemise the business, <coughs> then you'll fail. There's a famous book that I also try and get people to read. <coughs> and it'll be here. It's called the E-Myth. Okay? And the E stands for entrepreneurial. Okay? The entrepreneurial myth. And here's the myth, actually, because you... Let, this, let, let me quickly talk to you about that. Why do people go into business? You know people in business, don't you? Or you're in business yourself. Why do people go into business? There's only two and a half reasons. <coughs> two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll, you, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you the half. But you know, you could say it's three reasons. Why are the reasons that people go into business? You have a job, but you leave a job and you go into business. Why do you go into business? <laughs> to earn money. Good on you. This is the number one reason. I'm pleased you say that because whether I see this in America or in UK or in India or in Africa or in Australia, <coughs> Everybody says the same thing. It's to earn more money. Because you can earn more money than you can for working for someone. Okay, what's the other reason? Be your own boss. Ah, you're, you're good. This is where speaking out. <laughs> your own boss. What you are saying is, now I can um, uh, have more holidays, uh, now I can play golf, I can do what I like, when I like. I don't have the boss. These are the two reasons. What's the half reason? Can anyone think of why does someone go into business for the other half reason? They want people, they want other people to work for them. Mm, no, yeah, but it's true, but it's not the Changing Changing the lives of people around them. Hey? Changing the lives of people around them. Yeah, you're nearly there. Happiness? Yeah, no, no, but... To make a difference in society. Sorry? To make, a, to make some difference. Yeah, no, so it's good. I'll tell you the reason. Because uh, the, there's a guy in America who wrote a book called The E-Myth, Michael Gerber. And he, you know, it's a thesis, really. He's done lots of re research on it. The half reason is you do what you are passionate about. So actually in the book is about a woman called Sarah and she makes pies. She makes really good pies. You know, that's what she's good at, you know. And so most people, a lot of people go into business, they will not say the money and they will not say I can do what I like when I like. They'll say, I like making cakes. <laughs> and I'm really good at it. You know, look at my cakes, okay. Um, but in actual fact, I, I call that the half reason. What really happens? What's the truth? Why is the E, entrepreneurial, called a myth? What's the truth? What happens? You must know people in business. Do they earn lots of money and have all this free time? They can do what they like when they like. This is what happens? No. Hey, so you know. So what happens? They work every time. When, at, I mean, they don't work at all. Yeah. Because the, they, are, they are doing what they are passionate about. Yeah. And it's not like working at all. So what I say is... Uh, you end up earning less money. Most people earn less money than they would if they had a job, and they work more hours. It's complete opposite. It's the myth. 
in this book, in the corner, the E myth tells you why. Okay, and the reason why is that most people, they, they, in one sense, that they will say there is no company manual, no business manual. So there's no actually how does this business work? What say I was sick? I wasn't there. So there's no ability to scale the business or to grow the business. Okay. And that's the, that's, it's a big problem. I made a big mistake with this. I didn't have the systems. I didn't spend the money on the systems. I didn't spend the money on the right people to systemize the business, to have the company procedure, to have all these things so you could scale and grow and, and grow. So it's really important uh, to do this. Okay, I'll keep. I'll go a wee bit faster now. <clears throat> and, you know, I was just talking about this before upstairs. You can't grow what you can't measure. So you must have KPIs or key performance indicators uh, as, part of, as part of your business. <clears throat> Actually, as part of your life. If you go home tonight and you write out your life plan, make sure you do this, see if you can, you, you go and do that, then how do you know you are being successful? So you actually have to make some measures. I mean, you can write down the plan, you can write down the goals, but you must, if you want to be successful, make some measures. How does, you know, um, a sports person, you know, who wants to go to the Olympics, you know, they're a runner. How do they know that they're getting, because every time they're measuring that they want to get to this new goal, this faster time, and then they measure that, and then they, they know they go a bit more. So you must measure. And you should learn to do that and be hard on yourself and setting on the business. I'll go and look at a business again. Um, actually, I'm involved in several businesses, and even today I got one, I got the weekly report. I'm only the director. But like I insist that there's a weekly KPI report. What is in that report? Here's the sales, the sales pipeline, here's the product, here's the issues, here's customer feedback, good feedback, bad feedback, everything, every week. Never miss. So this is one of the things that you, you must do, you must implement this. And it's a mistake, some people don't. Um, you know, they, they review after months or maybe at the year and all this. It will never work. You will not be successful if you, if you don't. Okay, leadership. Are you being an inspirational leader? <coughs> it's not a choice. If you start the business, you nearly it's always up to you. You have to inspire and you and you and you have to lead. Uh, you need to find your mentor. You know, before I was saying, sometimes you'll feel really alone. And so I I, I complained, and they said, "This is your job. <laughs> you know, this is what you signed up for." So you should go out and find someone who inspires you, who holds you accountable. And, uh, and it helps you. Leaders are, are readers. And I always have put leaders are writers, but one of the things, I don't know how much you read. Sometimes I've met people who um, have done university and they've done this really well. They have A grades and everything. And you know, for some reason, they think they're finished. <laughs> there, I've done this. Tick, now I'm ready to. <laughs> and I go, this is just the beginning. That the whole of life is learning. And actually, leaders, you cannot be a leader unless you read. Actually, I'm a very slow reader. Good thing these days is, you know, I've probably got 200 books just on here. And I read everywhere I go. You know, I take the chance. You yeah, audio books, you can plug in, you can listen to books. If you're a leader, then sometimes there's a business and you're up against competitors and you're in meetings and that. The reason why you can do well and negotiate and win is because you know more than the other person. How do you know more than the other person? Because you read. You just read more than they did. And sometimes for me, you know, you could get up early in the morning, uh, every, everyone else is sleeping, it's quiet, it's 4 a.m., read. <laughs> okay, there's lots of stuff you can read. Um, so uh, do that. Don't ask your team, as a leader, don't ask your team to go where you won't go yourself. So sometimes I've seen people do that, the CEO, and they just say, I want you to do this. <laughs> so actually with sales, I think a CEO always has to do sales. Has to be able to go and talk to the customer, has to be able to get the feedback, has to be able to present. So I always look and go, never ask someone to go where you won't go yourself. Just parts of being a um, leader. And then also make sure you put a good team around you. So it's never you on your own. Sometimes if you ask me, how come I ended up making 14,000 rupees into $100 million. I should say, it was Stephanie, she was really good. She's much better than me. Um, it was uh, Daniel, oh, he was so clever, such a good uh, developer, and I just, it was my team. 
in nearly every business at the end of the day you'll look at it and say that was really important so how to find great people inspire them have them around you um, that's essential competitors so again to be successful you must know your competitors actually this is the thing I learned about Microsoft it was one of the books I read in the Alan in the early days of Microsoft um, with Word and Excel and they were competing uh, against Word Perfect and uh, Lotus 123 and I can remember reading in the book that they would have in the, those days you'd buy the software in a packet and uh, they would have the packets that the software was in in the hallway and they would uh, bowl down <laughs> and try and blow the, uh, knock the packets over but what they were saying so this is just a funny story but what they were saying was um, and I read this is a Microsoft quote we are only and Microsoft has so much money <laughs> and it's very successful but even with all that money and all that success they were saying we are only 18 months away from failing and so actually that kept them and I presume it is still like this you could comment Helen but that kept them looking at the competitors what are they doing how are they doing this understanding their product you should do all <coughs> of that and that sometimes um, I would take my team away my management team away to, for a, um, two days to, no, off, off site from the business and I say the whole point of that time was to be the competitor so I'd actually say you know when we got over there I'd just say okay I am not this company anymore I'm the competitor company and we're going to make the plan to beat my company <laughs> okay? and so it's actually a really it's a fun exercise to do and you try and work out all the how will we beat this company and you try and uh, get in the mindset of the competitor it's a good thing to do it's so fun to do as well but you must you must treat competitors seriously and you know how you're going to win how you're going to beat them how you're going to do it better it's back to the game of chess I talked about this before <coughs> listening instead of speaking and so actually some people are very bad at this you know but I just go the customer knows so, when you can make something and at the end of the day is the customer who's going to tell you I love your product I love what you do and all that sort of thing or actually if you are listening I don't like your product <laughs> I bought it I'm unhappy this is what I don't like this is what I don't this is what I don't. so you must find that out you must have a willingness to want to do that um, Here's something I read in Microsoft as well. I'm giving you lots of Microsoft quotes, but they did it. Um, I understand that Bill Gates, maybe in the early days when he was um, was um, managing the business, he is the CEO, and I, I still apply this today. In fact, I wrote an email this morning to someone asking for this. So the weekly reports that you're collecting from people and that you are making as a management team that the, the CEO gets or the directors get, um, apparently he used to ask for as much bad news as good news. This is really interesting because I've been in businesses or companies where you only read good news. Now, how's the business going? And you read, oh, it's great. There's this and this and this. If I see something like that, I just don't believe it. I just think people are lying to me or they're deluded. One of the two, you know. Now, you're not telling the truth. There is always bad news. And you must listen and you must create an environment to get that bad news back. And then if you get that, then I think uh, you create the culture to say, what bad news have we got this week? You know, and you read through and say, oh, good. You know, how are we going to fix this? <laughs> you know, how are we going to make it better? But it's a culture thing of actually trying to do that. Lots of people want to put the berry there, sweep it under the carpet. You know, they don't want to hear that. But don't do that. <clears throat> uh, here's another thing. This is good. Counting the beans. Sorry, like I said, I'm the accountant. But you know, I've seen some people, I'm not asking you to be the accountant, but if you are going to lead a business and create a business, actually if you're going to manage your personal life, here's a rule. Actually, and sometimes this rule doesn't apply today. Oh, you know, well, people think it doesn't apply, but I don't believe this. <clears throat> you should, this is, uh, you'll always be successful if you do this. So here's something. If you sell more than you spend. <laughs> actually, in your personal life, if you if you uh, spend less than you earn you'll be happy <laughs> it's that all the trouble is when you spend more than you earn <laughs> and then you have debt and then you have other trouble and all the trouble in the companies 
is actually someone who doesn't understand the numbers, doesn't look at the numbers, and they spend more than they have. So in the end, I know some companies need investment at the start, but in the end, if you don't know the numbers, then um, you cannot run a business. Actually, one of my, my, one of my tests, if you were the CEO of a business, and, uh, and I was saying to you, how are you going? I would say to you, oh, how many sales this week? How many sales today? If you couldn't answer that question, I'd go, <laughs> no good. You must be, able to, you, as a CEO and as a leader of the business, you should know all the numbers and you should, you should, um, you should count them. How much capital do you need? And I'll give you a quote from a guy called Richard Branson. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, so you know Richard Branson? So here's a quote from him. Uh, some people today, you see, saying, oh, look, I have a great idea, I have a great product, you know, they're, they're, give me money. <laughs> you know, to invest it. Give me lots of money. Oh, I'm going to spend it all. And I don't think that, I know you need investment, but it's not the main ingredient. Here's what Richard Branson says. The wonderful, how much capital do you need? Do you know how much capital did I need in my first business? 14,000 rupees. And, and you know what? Lots of hard work. I mean, I'm going to come to that in a minute. I'm, I think it's the next slide. But lots of hard work. You know, you can't, can't get away from this. Here's what Richard Branson says. The wonderful thing that money is that money is not the sole currency when it comes to starting a business. It's not the money. It's, it's part of it. Drive when it comes to starting business. Drive, determination, passion, hard work are all free. <laughs> okay? And are more valuable than a pot of cash. So drive, determination, passion, hard work are free. And you have those. If you don't have them, maybe you shouldn't be in business, but you should have them. Um, I'll put in here a little, no, no, I'll skip that. When I, if, I, if you want this PowerPoint and I send it to you, I had some notes there. Okay, so I like just to do the picture here, you can think about that, but then I have some notes underneath that, that I can read. And this is something I put in last night, is the elevator pitch. This is something I've learned, and if you're in the startup environment or an entrepreneur, you must learn how to pitch. Um, the elevator pitch for me is 50 seconds. So it's the elevator just going up, you have this time to present your business and your company. Most people uh, do this really badly, okay? So something that you should perfect. You know, what is so good about your business? What is the why? What, you know, why would I want to, you know, work, you know, be work for you? Why would I want to buy your product or service? Unless you can say this in 50 seconds to a stranger or to someone and get my attention, then, you know, this is, it's not good. You must be able to do that. I went to a, um, I've hardly been to any courses, but I went to a course for CEOs <coughs> uh, where they talked about this, so I've never forgotten it. Uh, I partly never forgot it because this is after I've been really successful in a business, and we had to, some of us had to then do the pitch. <coughs> and so I did the pitch, and this person, actually this person, Alan, was the, the head of Microsoft in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and this person, he looked at me, he said, you are hopeless. <laughs> that was it. He told me, he said, my pitch was terrible and I was hopeless, I was useless. How did I ever sell anything? I was very offended. I was trying to argue back and saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, <laughs> I have sold lots, I've created this business. No, no, no. <coughs> Actually, he was right. Even though I'd been listening all day, I hadn't, I hadn't listened properly, I hadn't figured <coughs> out. And one of the worst things people do is they go in and see, you know, if you're seeing someone and you're trying to pitch the business, you say, hello, my name is... John, I'm from this company. And the guy who was running this course, he was from MIT at America, very, very successful person. And he starts off by saying, I don't care who you are. <laughs> I don't care about your company name. And so you start to strip it back. Why should they care about who you are, what your name is, what your company is? What have you got? What is your why? Why would I even bother talking to you? So actually the elevator pitch is very important. I always go back and say, can you tell me in 50 seconds about your company or your idea? And you should practice this. What do you practice to? The mirror. <laughs> Look at it and convince yourself. But you must put effort into this. You must put effort in and you must do it really well, especially if you're trying to raise money in there. <clears throat> I'm nearly finished, okay? 
hard work and transparency. So I still wanted to make clear, just in case, but I'm going to say that I haven't met anyone yet who has been successful in business who hasn't worked hard. So I hope you all have this attitude. Actually, and I mean really hard. So some people uh, these days think, I don't want to work hard, I want, you know, I want to have an easy life, I take lots of time off. You know, this is it. And, you go, and I'll go, it won't work. Actually, for me in my early days, after I left Nepal again, on Wednesday, every Wednesday, I'd stay all, up all night. Um, because I thought, I'd get an extra day. <laughs> I have an eight-day week now, because <laughs> everyone else is sleeping. At 1am one, 1 in the morning, I'd, I'd start to get a bit tired. And uh, you know, I'd have a drink, uh, a coffee or something, and try and wake myself up. And I'd wake up, and I'd work all night. So I did this for mm, several years. I got an extra day. I'm not asking you to do this, but I am saying to you, if you ask me, why did I turn $200 into $25 million? I said, I worked hard. And, uh, and you must ask yourself, are you prepared to work hard? And also, if you're married or you know, in, the, in a relationship, then you should ask, is this okay as well? You know, you should, you know, some people might say, you know, hey, I don't like, I don't like this. But you should work these things out. But um, hard work and transparency. It's not easy. I just don't. I have. I keep asking. Um, show me the person who who made a, a big success and it was easy. <laughs> uh, they they you know didn't do much work. They had a cruisy life or easy life. I just I cannot find those people. It's hard. It's good, but it's hard. <clears throat> Oh, the final sale. Oh, I'll talk brief. I mean, in the end, if you create a business, uh, one of the things you'll do is saying, how do you exit the business? Okay? And so, um, in the end, sometimes, you know, before I was talking about sell, sell, sell. So, selling the business is a final sale. And we're really what I'm trying to say there is, you should do this really well. So, some people don't. They really muck it up. And that this is a lot, you know, you leave a lot of money on the table when you could have negotiated a, a, a much better deal. So sometimes I just go, um, you should think about, you know, every day you're trying to make a sale for, you know, $1,000, you know, one here, one there, and then one day you want to make a sale for millions of dollars. And I've seen that people put lots of effort to make the $1,000 sale, and in this huge sale, they don't make much effort, and they lose lots of money. So all I'm saying is I've learned, I learned the, the second time, to um, say, I'm going to think about the future. I have a clear vision. I know where I'm ending up. And for me, I want two people, two companies, to buy, want to buy me. This is what I did. So I had two people want to buy What does that do if you have two people wanting to buy you? Oh, it's a price up, doesn't it? It's a price up. So I was thinking about this many years before I did it. I even named the companies. This is who I'll, I'll get to be interested in. I sort of say, with competitors, and you're trying to make a sale to them, you either love them or you irritate them. <laughs> or, or both. You know, <laughs> uh, but you get them interested to talk to them. And sometimes they'll take you out, want, I want to buy you because you're a problem to them. Or I want to buy you because you're a good partner, I like you. you know, so, but you, you should plan this. Okay. I'm still near. So the reward is at the end of that, Happiness. Well, I think it's untrue. This is an interesting thing. So, and it's one of the one of the things that you may find. I know, and I know it's easy for me to say because I have more money than I need. But sometimes we live in the system where we think that ultimately, and we work so hard, and, and we are successful, and then actually you get this pile of money. And actually, I can tell you, and lots of other people will tell you that then you are potentially unhappy. <laughs> because it doesn't do anything for you. You say, this, this is the reward. Sometimes I say, it's a mirage. You know, and, and often I've said, you know, what is really, what, what, you, know, you, you end up having to ask the question, what does make you happy? And what is the purpose of life? And, you know, and, and all of that. And so I only put this up there because I encourage you, because I've seen people then chase the money. Somehow the money, you, can, you must be able to read in the magazines. You see the people who are very rich and who only think of money. Their marriages are always failing. <laughs> you know, they're always, they're in tr they have, end up on drugs. They, they just have all this trouble. Uh, because they're thinking that money, and the thing that money can buy, <coughs> actually makes them happy. And so I can tell you, and many people will tell you, it doesn't make you happy. In actual fact, the irony is you'll probably have <coughs> to work out how to try and give the money away. 
<laughs> and this uh, sometimes can take more work than the effort you made to actually uh, to get the money. But anyway, you should think about it. <clears throat> Just be careful that if you are only thinking that the money, and I know it's harder for if you have no money and you're saying, I'm trying to get myself and my family, even your community, uh, to lift them up, this, this is all a good thing. I really like it. I encourage you. I want you to be entrepreneurs and to take the risk and to do these things. I want all of that for you. Don't think that the end game, the end goal is you have this money, now you're happy. Probably not. <laughs> okay, so think about that. So then I just put up here, so now you end up having to give. Um, this is what makes you happy, you know, in one sense. I think if you find that you that you give, you receive more back. So uh, working here in Nepal, this is where, and with um, MIC and with Alan and, his and Juno and the team, then we try and take rooms like this. This is a classroom in Rotibun. You go back and we make it into a classroom like this. So there's a really good, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> but you could do that. I want you to do what I did, okay? You could do that. And this, this will make you very happy too. Just in case, I gave you a whole lot of things about uh, being an entrepreneur. Now you might think, whoa, I'm never going to be an entrepreneur. It sounds like I work too hard, I have to fire people, uh, my parents might not like me, but so, you know, oh, I never do this. <laughs> and uh, then I say, but actually, if you asked me, I worked in an accounting firm, being an accountant, am I happy having been an entrepreneur, started business, you know, things have failed, but some things have been successful. <coughs> I'm really happy. Okay, I'm really very, very happy that I've done this. It was a good thing um, that I understood my personality. That my Cheryl, my wife, gave, said, "Yes, you do that." She's like, "She, uh, she love is blind. She, you know, she, she can't see." You know, <laughs> yeah, you'll be okay. You know? And so she, she encouraged me to do that. I, do, I would want to say, if you have the idea to be an entrepreneur and to start a business, then do it. Okay, don't. Don't wait until you are old and saying, I wished I did it, <laughs> is that you should do it. You know, learn these things, read the books, you know, the things I've been talking to you, do those things. Do you know what? You should be successful. It's, it's not so hard, it's not as hard as you think. And entrepreneurs, 86% uh, job satisfaction, 84% success, you know, the freedom, the happiness, the, the money. There are benefits of being an entrepreneur. Um, I was just going to say, I'm, I, I'm still, it never stops. I've invested in maybe 10 technology companies. I could show you some of those things, it's too late now. But, but um, I, actually, I think the best 30 years are yet to come. So I sort of always look ahead. You should, your glass is half full. There's lots of opportunity. So many things that can be done to, in, to improve things. Now, what was I going to show you? No, I've run out of time. Otherwise, I was going to go, go through this little list a bit. You know, at the beginning, I said, you are solving a problem and you are solving some pain and what is that you want to be very clear about that and why would someone want this so each of these businesses i could go through and say this is the problem it solves this is why people will want the thing and so i was just trying to round it up by then by saying um i could give you examples here but i want you to have your own example and to think that through so i i think i think that's the end oh yeah so I'm there, you can ask me some questions, but I'll just go, the real issue is, <coughs> sometimes I see for people, sometimes I've seen people go to many courses in many events to learn about how to be entrepreneurial, to learn about business, but they never do it. And so the Nike slogan, you know, yeah, is just, really just good. do it. And so that's I sort of end there, you know, again, if you're having this thought, but I didn't tell you just to do it, with, what, what is the thing you'll do the most? You will write the, you'll write the plan. You'll think it all out. So, but still, you should just do it. So, am I happy that I've been entrepreneurial and ended up in our business? I'm very happy. I've employed. Sometimes I look at I've employed hundreds of people. I've paid millions of dollars in taxes. Do you know what? I'm really happy <laughs> because so you need to. Somebody should pay taxes. <laughs> you, know, don't you? you know, you need to do that. You need the hospitals. You need the roads. I haven't paid all, but but actually. For me, when I was writing out the tax check, I would look at it and go, oh, this is good. You know, I got some money as well, so it's not, I'm happy to do this. So, but you must uh, decide to do it. So, thank you for, uh, for coming along. I'm happy to give you this uh, slideshow. I hope I've encouraged you to, uh, to make a plan for your life.
to make a plan for a business and to be entrepreneurial and to do some of these things because uh, this will help you be successful. I've given you some stories, some good things, some bad things and all of that. But I hope that was encouraging to you and that you just do it. Okay? Uh, you could ask me any questions. Is that how you wanted to do it? Or have I used all the time? Or? I have no oh, you have a question? Yeah. <coughs> so I'm not walking around. Just having a drink. Yeah. As did as you firstly stated that you started with 14,000 errors yeah. and you ended up. Now we have a worth of that $100 million. Yeah. And what made you start from that $14,000 to this table? Just locked on out in your favor or? So there's a good. Uh, opportunity just <coughs> came over you. Actually, th this is an interesting question. When I first started, I didn't write out a plan to say, I want to make a hundred million, I want to make a billion, I didn't say. I started out to try and make uh, 300,000. And then as I, so a uh, much smaller amount, this was my goal, because I did write a plan, and I did have a budget, and so my goal was here, and then I started to get it, and I thought, hey, I'm gonna put my goal up here now. So it's just like the person running, and trying to go further, and then I get to there, I go, eh, I'm going to shift it up to here. So actually what happens is I didn't start with that huge goal, but I incrementally grew because I got more confident that I could do it. Actually, even on that last slide, I said, now I'm involved in some businesses and I could maybe make a billion because I just have more confidence if you work out the plan. But you start a small, smaller plan that is, actually is the goal, is it realistic? Does that answer? I don't know what, add one more question. Yeah. So, just being frank, you were introduced to us as a director and an investor, right? What's that? <laughs> like, so, 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 when yeah. you did and yeah. the Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are investing in. Yeah, yes, yes. But you talked about here, about entrepreneurship and creative yeah. businesses yeah. and how to work that out. So, I want to learn something more about investing. What is actually intelligent investing? Okay. So, it's, so the answer is, is a really simple answer, you can have a seat, is it? the really simple answer is, I look for the, the very things I just talked to you about. So, so I'm looking for a plan, <laughs> you know, someone has written this out, I'm looking for leadership, you know, I see that there is a good leader. All the things I went through there, I'm looking for these, that they value sales, I can go through, you know, all the things I talked about, all of these things I see in the business. Most of all, one of the key things is, all of you, if you start your own business, will believe in yourself, mind you. So uh, all of us will invest in ourselves. As you know how I say you should read, sometimes I say you are investing in yourself. You know, don't be too stingy and you don't even buy the book. <laughs> buy the book and if you say, you know, sometimes people, I've seen people waiting for their employer to buy the book. <laughs> and I just go, don't be a stinge, just buy it. <laughs> for, you, for who? For yourself. <laughs> because you're investing in yourself. So you invest in yourself. So the key thing when I look at a business is you're investing in the people. So you must you must have good people. Okay, there's the, there's the key. And then all those other things. Yeah. What more? Oh, there's a guy down the back. I'll go to him first. Actually, I'm wondering about a uh, situation. Yeah. About uh, when you are working in a progress uh, of, uh, in a top level. Yeah. There might be a situation like you been falling down immediately in a situation. Yeah. So I'm wondering what in that situation you find out the problem or so how did you figure out that or how did you maintain everything? Or what is the important things that we need to be careful about after being down and again again to be raised up? Yeah. What is that thing? Okay, there's a good question. And I, and I do plan for this. And so look, one of the things I do is I plan for the worst scenario. So uh, when I'm doing my budgets and plans, I'll go, look, uh, I actually, I didn't say this to you, I have three plans, okay? One plan is my optimistic plan, my target. Um, my glasses are full, I'm, I'm an optimist, and so here's what I'm, I'm going for. And my sales team and the whole company is aiming for this. I have another plan sometimes that I give to the board or to, you know, you might have advisors or your parents or something like this. And this is more conservative, okay? It's not, it's not the optimistic plan, but it's a conservative, and it's a successful plan. Then I make another plan, and that plan is the worst case, the worst scenario. 
So I actually, from the beginning, work out saying, what say I make no sales, what say I, the, you know, everything goes bad. And all I'm trying to do is saying, in that scenario, am I still there? So I never actually uh, go be, below that. I mean, uh, these things might happen, but I'll just go, the, there is a worst scenario and I plan for that and I say, can I still survive? Can I still have a business with this worst case scenario? So when I do that, and you should all, I think everybody should do that, plan for the worst case and sort of still be there, still know that you'll survive. The second thing is if you're doing something that is failing, then as I, I did mention that before, it's fail quickly. <laughs> Is, um, so, you know, like you, sometimes you can see the worst thing is part of human nature that we're doing something we don't want to admit that it's a bad idea. Actually, I, I've learned to be more and more like that. Sometimes I come to my team, I'd have my staff meeting, and just to make them feel better, I would say to them, you know, I said that we would do this, and it's a great idea, and we're going to make all these sales. And usually I'd say, this is me. Then I'd say to them, that's a really stupid idea. <laughs> it hasn't worked. I'd try and say, this is me. And I'll try and get them to actually go, oh, okay then, you know. <laughs> if he thinks it's a, you know, he's mucked up. And then, then I'm cutting sooner. Because I see people um, actually p persist with a bad idea. And they go down and down and down and down. And then what, by the time they get there, it's too late. Uh, so, I, does that help? Can I ask you? Yeah. My is, uh, at what point in your life uh, you, you realize that uh, you want to start a business? Oh, so I started in um, my mid-30s, okay? Uh, but that is a wee bit because I said that um, to some degree um, I didn't have a plan for my life. I drifted a bit. I mean, I was, my life was happy and that, but uh, now I'd go, if you are not, uh, how old are you? I'm 19. 19? Fantastic. How lucky are you? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, are, you are a really lucky person that you are young and I've already told you all these things. Because cause I had to wait until I was older, that much older. So you can start at any time. Um, and the things I told you, you know, I think if you do these things, you'll be successful. Put good people around you, um, write out the plan, all these things, they work. But you don't have to wait till you're older. <laughs> Equally, you know, when the Colonel Sanders, um, just because if you are older, you know, sometimes you think, I, I started business, <coughs> excuse me, at uh, the hardest time. Partly because I had two children, they were young, you know, not at school, uh, my wife wasn't working, I had a mortgage, and now I'm going, phew, you know, now I start a business. You know, and, and everyone around me is saying, whoa, you know, don't do that, is that irresponsible, you know, and all these sort of things. So it's not. Not if you write the plan out and, and, and work it out. You are lucky. <coughs> You're so young. <laughs> yeah. Can we get your email contact? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but you know, yeah, so I'll give it to Juno, and uh, she can send. So, what what motivates you to start your own business? What motivates me? Uh, this is interesting. So I uh, probably you know when I go back to the two reasons, I, I am the same. I thought I could uh, you know the two reasons to go into business was you could earn more money, um, and uh, and I could be my own boss. <laughs> So in actual fact, I'm going to tell you that, you know, uh, in the book that says the E-Myth, that this has not worked out. For most people, this has not worked out. For me, it has worked out. Why did it work out for me? What's the answer? Why did it work out for me? So I, I, I then I made more money, now I can have my own time. Why, why, why is that? Hey? I have a plan. I did what I said. What I showed you, I actually did this. <laughs> And it works. So not everything works, but I did this. This is what I learned. But that was my motivation was uh, <coughs> I would rather. And then I'm saying, actually, I learned that. You know, I think. So now enjoy it. Okay. So now, yep. Like uh, you were saying, plan and plan and plan. Yeah. I do know that uh, plan, feeling to plan is planning to fail. But my problem is I plan a lot. Yeah. Uh, how do I keep uh, consistent in my one plan? Uh, when gentleman came here and she said um, one of the participants participate will win uh, one mouse yeah. then I'm sure everyone everyone has planned but yeah. only few of them acted on it I mean yeah. like how do we encourage ourselves to act on our own plan okay you can win the mouse if you give me the answer 
I just, I just, I just told you not not long ago what the answer was. Okay, who, who's the answer? If someone gives me the answer, then you win the prize. Okay, you put your hand up. Just do it. Hey? Just do it. Correct. That's the answer. You could have said lots of things. So you should have been faster. I just told you. Where is the slide? <laughs> to see it. <laughs> so I think this is the best mouse in the world. Okay. Yes. Oh. Little wee one swift point thing. This is the next version of the thing, so. Oh. <laughs> No more mouses. No more mouses. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, what about a vision that is beyond our scope? Like a hard, high level of so I'm an IT student, I'm yeah. a programmer. Yeah. But my vision is kind of high level of programming that is beyond, that can be trained over here. Yeah. I need to go somewhere else. Yeah. But I like to do it over here. Um, but I'm trying my best. So what will be the best point to be focused on that point of scenario? That's uh. Well, I think without, under without understanding everything, then I'm still saying you, to write out the plan for your life yeah, and the plan for your life. So you write all yeah. this out, and then as you do that, you work out how to do it. But if I share someone my vision, they tell me that it is not possible, or either you are crazy, or it's just wasting your time. Ah, correct. That's what some people will say. Yeah. But they it's not true. already me, but I'm keeping on. But it's all about six months earlier. Yeah. I'm still figuring out on how can I do it, but still I'm not getting the point how to get this started. Okay, well, I gave the answer. Just Sorry, I don't have another mouse for you. But I gave the answer. I gave the answer to say. There's one of the slides, in, and there's a whole slide for this. What, what was it? What was my answer? No, it's not. Never quit. Yeah, there's a never quit. So you you were saying for you tried for six months, try another six months, and try another six months. You know, so you know, work the plan out, but you don't quit. Actually, beyond our visa. So my answer to that is. When Sonika uh, wanted to get an internship in our organization, I gave her a challenge and I told her there's no one to teach you. But I wanted to develop a Windows 7 phone app when we did not have a phone in our office. <laughs> she didn't even have a phone to test the app. And that was the Flower Finder app and I've got about 30 people working on the solution now on the first floor. So when she started, there was no one to teach her how to develop a phone app, and we didn't have a phone to give to her to say, okay, this is how you test the app, purely on the emulator. And on the emulator, at that time, the GPS would not work, because the solution was around GPS. And there was, and like I said, today, I think, with a lot of courses online and a lot of books yeah. available, yeah. majority of it is free. Yeah. I mean, I don't really see the reason why you have to be in Silicon Valley. I, uh, um, we have another startup who is trying to develop a solar car, self-driven car. Everyone tells her, tells him he's crazy. I'm encouraging. They're good. I'm telling him, don't ever believe when someone tells you it cannot be done. Yes, it can be done. It is for him. If people can do it in one year's time, it might take him ten times more work. But yes, today if you look at all of the trends, that's where every car manufacturer is going towards. Read it, yes it can be done. Can it be done in Nepal? It's hard, but yes it can be done. Yeah, correct. In fact, in fact, um, in another business I'm looking to invest in, and I laid out the idea and the plan, this is my biggest plan and biggest idea, I haven't got time to tell you, but and I told another person who is an entrepreneur and has some money and they said they, want to, they might want to invest, and they went off and talked to some people to do some research and all those people told him is a bad idea. And so they came back to me going, um, this is what I found out. And I said, I really like it to somebody. So I've worked out the plan. I really like it when lots of people don't understand. Because actually that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm here and that's why I'm going to be successful and they're not. Now I know that sounds arrogant, but it's actually one of the things that happens is that you understand something lots of people don't. 
I'm not saying to be crazy. I'm saying to, you know, it's a well worked out plan. You have the idea and all this sort of thing. What about the people who started Uber? You know, and they say, hey, we don't need a taxi company. We can do it this way. What about the people who started Airbnb? And said, we don't need the hotels. We can just do it this way. I'm sure they talked to lots of people and said, this is a bad idea. But they still, they still kept on. So, you know, if you, 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 you uh, be stubborn, never quit, um, and, uh, and keep going, you get there.